Uh, wouldn't it be funny if we got Guardians of the Galaxy and Tower of Terror? We wouldn't even have to make an episode. I don't know how I feel about that yet. It's still a rumor, but it's also just rumored for California. Yeah. So the Florida one's fine. Who, Christine, who cares about them over there? It's the lesser park. Wow. <laughs> who cares? Just just turn it back into a parking lot. You said it, not I. <laughs> turn it into a parking lot for an airport that goes to the good Disney in Florida. <laughs> How about that? That's the best ride over there in California. You're just kind of loose subscribing now. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to... I forgot the name of the series we're doing. Hold on. Hello, everybody. And I didn't think of the name before I started over. Hello, everybody. And welcome to Imagineering for Dummies, the series that we have apparently taken too long to do because I forgot the name twice. It's a series... <laughs> It's a fun game. We're going to go ahead and we're going to randomly pick one attraction from Disney World and one movie from the Disney archives. And we're going to Imagineer in like 15 minutes or less the perfect attraction blending the two. It's gonna. Are you ready? I'm our ready. last one, our last one, just uh, as a reminder, was we took um, Lights, Motors, Action and Alice in Wonderland and made Alice's Extreme Stunt Show. Yeah. And it probably would have been the best thing there, if not for what I'm assuming will be Star Wars Land taking Daredevil its place. Daredevil showed up. It was crazy. It was nuts. Uh, all right. Let's see what we're going to have this time around. All right. Our attraction is spinning, spinning. Here we go. Uh, Turtle Talk with Crush. Okay. And our movie is, what if it's Finding Nemo? Wouldn't that be amazing? And it would be really easy for us. Done. Wreck-It Ralph. So Wreck-It Ralph and Turtle Talk with Crush. I like that. I like Holy, that already. This is almost like it's not even going to be that funny because it could almost be like a genuinely good idea there. Right? Okay. So. So. Okay. What are the what are the pillars of Turtle Talk with Crush? The pillars? I mean, well, first is the feeling that you're underwater with him, right? So you're right. in the world of Finding Nemo. Right. Um, and then it's this interactive, you know, character that you talk to and right. somebody on the other side who's kind of vibing off of you and making jokes and all that good right. stuff. As Crush. As Crush. So, I'm going through my brain of like the best cat. I mean, obviously it would be Ralph, right? Like, uh, uh, Ralph would it be would obvious? Would it be? Or what if? Would it be, what? um,. What's her face? Uh, oh, uh, a, 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 Veliss, F Fon, Von Schweetz. What's yes. her name? Felicity? Was it Felicity? Felicity? Yeah. There's no, Vel Sarah Felicity's Silver. not a name. Yeah. Sarah Silverman. Yeah, Sarah Silverman. Von Schweetz. Well, okay, or it could be like a duo, because the whole idea is that we're going with the most humorous character generally, right? Like, that's kind right. of the appeal of these things. It's like and, and like Crush, like Crush wasn't a main character. It was a very supporting character. Right. So. Right. so maybe it could be. Maybe it could be her. Maybe Zangief. What? From the round table discussion. Yeah, like that Street Fighter. Like okay, hold on. Fighter. Here's an idea I have in my mind. Okay, so like you said, the whole idea with Turtle Talk with Crush is you're under, you're in his world. Mm -hmm. Now you'd think the obvious parts. Okay, we're in the video game world. But what if we personalize this? What if the room is an '80s arcade? And everybody goes up to their own arcade machine and is having their own conversation with a different character from the movie 101. I mean, that'd be high on the budget, but sure. Yeah, why We've not? We've got Star Wars money. We can do whatever we want. I mean, they all are from their own video games, right? So like yeah. a cabinet would look like their own game. Street Fighter or the the sweet racing game, whatever yeah. it was. And everyone has the built-in two-way camera. Yeah. And you're having that conversation. You could have uh, the villain that uh, Alan Tudyk plays. Wow, I don't really remember a lot of the character names from this Neither movie. Neither do I, but I That's haven't watched it again, so there's a good reason yeah. to. <laughs> um, and you're having that conversation. Yeah. Now, uh, let's let's expand this. Uh -huh. uh, I think we just knocked it out of the park. I mean, we did this. It's been under five minutes. We've right. got an and idea. I'm thinking, so, I'm thinking the boom. exit, right? So the exit should be like what are we what are we experiencing after we get well this is what i'm i was about to suggest let's go ahead and apply wreck it ralph to the entire c pavilion that's what i was thinking originally yeah too, right we because... need to we need to expand on this so wait it could be like uh oh my god this is terrible because i've only seen this movie once so 
But what's the area like that they all go into before they go into their games? Their yeah, little, it's like a grand game central oh, station. Yeah. What if it was game central station? Okay. That's, that's like, a cool idea. Right. And each offshoot is like a different arcade machine. Yeah. And okay. And you have meet and greets with a bunch of the characters and like, um, I, I don't, and like, like, so what they're doing now at, um, Launch Bay is like they have Jawas just walking around. They're not necessarily meet and greet characters, but they. You like, said crazy. Jawas. I heard Jabas. I was very confused for a second. Yeah, that would be really hard for them to walk around. Oh, 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 um, oh. Jawas that walk around to trade little trinkets with you. They're not meant to be like meet and greet. They're meant to be just like a part of the yeah. atmosphere. So what if crazy thought, but through video licenses, game characters right because they already had it in sonic the and nintendo yeah they had some like can we can we can we hold on can we back up for a second mm -hmm. to the jawas when they were trying to trade were they actually could you could you can you trade with them yes so what so were you trading you bring i mean i didn't do it but what you do is you bring shiny things so people go to like 99 cent stores and get get like little toys and you trade with them. And sometimes what? they give you like something that someone else you didn't hear about this? They'll give no. you something that someone else gave them. So they're like, like ge they're like geocaching in one building. It's yeah. like you're trading your you garbage for other garbage. Droid from the make your own droid. What? Yeah. That's oh, awesome. And you, we, what we, am I doing we, here we, and not we, there? <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go just sell out a 99 cent store and take it to Orlando. That's crazy. Through your mind. Uh, sir, you've been here all day. The parks are closing and <laughs> you, you've run out of space. You can't, you've somehow traded your way up to owning one of the registers. You can't do that, sir. I don't know how this is happening. Okay, sorry, we've gone way off track. I'm just, my mind's blown. I didn't hear about that. Um, well, see, here's what I'm thinking, though. The C's are all educational, right? They're there to teach you. They they show you, you know, what it's like to be in the ocean, what it's like for marine life in the ocean, so you can learn about it. So what if, just go with me here, what if we were to expand that to the world of video games, we bring back all of the Disney video game development that they just recently decided that they were going to shut down, we put all of the developers in that giant tank in the middle, and mm -hmm. then people can just go and put their face against the glass and watch coders coding all day, just sitting at the computer, just they can also coding just away. Learn like about no, the no, no. They just need to stare at them. No, no. Like, oh, no. I'm thinking more like the the rest of the future world and in, in inventions, which used to be like more interactive and like what it's like to see that back end of that, or what the history of video games were, or the what the inside of the NES looks like, because, you know, it's, like, archaic for most kids now. Maybe, um, maybe like, a, a little interactive kiosk area where you could build your own game. That'd be awesome. Like a little like, platform, like a Mario Maker style. Yeah. This is too good of an idea for this series. This is just unfair. I know. Man. We're so smart. We're Why so aren't smart. we hired yet? I don't know. All right. Well, I guess there's not much left to. I guess well, we just came up with a really genuinely great idea. Yep. That's it. We're done. That's. We're should we just wrap up the series? Yep, I mean, whatever. Wreck it, Ralph. Oh man. Wait. How do we didn't talk about how we're gonna work Fix It Felix and the game into it? Um. What do you mean, like the two? Well, is I it... mean, he's like a main character, and and I feel like that game doesn't have representation in the the land yet. Where are we gonna put that? How do we we how do we step it up, make it something crazy? I don't know. Um What if I don't know. What if the actual building can be wrecked by Wreck It Ralph? Is in there? What if they use projection technology inside you put the facade of the building? Because now mm -hmm. we're dealing inside outside already love it. All right? all right. You've got the facade of the building and it projects the game onto that facade. So he's wrecking the building. And then you, you know, every hour or every 20 minutes or what am I talking about? These are short levels. Every like five minutes, a new kid could get up to the controls and is playing on this like two, three story tall building facade. That's an awesome experience, right? Mm-hmm. That's this great. is way too seriously of good of an idea. I know. Just let's put it in the classified. Boom. This video away. Done. Don't really we're just going to have to, we're going to really have to break it down and, and do something good for the next one. I don't know when that's going to be, but oh man, we just set the bar way too high. Way too high. Uh, if you love our idea, which of course you do because it's the best idea ever, you can praise us in the comments below, uh, or you can praise us on Twitter. I'm at, I'm at Rob Plays, Christine. I'm at Ivy Winter YT. 
You also have a channel that has a lot of stuff. I can't even make fun of all your Disney vlogs anymore because they're done. They are done. So yeah. now it's the PAX vlog? No, those are done too? No, there's one or two more parts of the PAX okay. vlog. Oh, okay. And then there will just be more Disney centric videos. So. There you go. So go check it out. That's uh, Ivy Winter. There you go. That was a gap. I hope I remember <laughs> to edit that gap. It's going to be weird. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you, Christine's brain and Rob's brain for coming up with such an amazing idea. Yep. Um, you're welcome, Bob Iger, when you see this and you hire us instantly. Uh, you could have the idea. We're really, we're really cheap. Um, I hope to see you next time for the next episode of Imagineering for Dummies, which apparently we're not dummies anymore. We've graduated. Imagineering for geniuses. PhDs. The end. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. It's just like a mansion, right? Yeah. So why did the sisters want to marry them? I mean, who would want to marry a prince, I guess? The rich keep getting richer. That's the story. That's I know. That's the story of Cinderella. It's about, it's about the 1%.